Someone rolled the stone away was it a thief? No, it was an angel. Mary said he lives again. Do you believe? Yes, it was an angel. Thomas was a doubter until he saw for himself. Jesus even let him touch the spear hole in his side. He is risen. He is risen. Yes, our Lord, he is risen today. There's nobody left in that Tear this temple down, he said, and in three days I, I will rebuild it. Jesus had to die so that we all could be saved. That is how God healed it. Those who had him crucified thought they had seen his end. They did not know the cross would be his victory. He is risen. He is risen. Yes, our Lord, he is risen today. There are leaders with blood stains. There's nobody left in that grave. He is risen. Do you have the the song "Gone"? Do, do you, did you request that one? Do you have the song "Gone" up there? I think I meant to put it because he lives, but um, if you have gone, thank you very much. Mary came unto the tomb of Jesus. The stone was moved and he had gone away. The angel said, Fear not, I know who seek ye. But he is risen this. She heard him say, Come, the stone is rolled back, come, the tomb is empty, come, to sit at the Father's side. Come, of the death triumphant, come, sin is defeated. He lives forevermore. My friend, if you don't know the reasons. 
Savior. I beg of you, don't wait too late to pray. Don't wait until His bride has been completed. Don't wait until you hear Him say too children to come to our pledges and they're going to do a couple songs for you this morning Say 
Regina Mitchell.
Jeff Oxendine. David Crump. The Lord. Aren't you glad mercy walked in? Thank God. We were all guilty, but mercy walked in. I'm glad for that this morning. Appreciate his love and mercy to me. All right, let's stand together and sing one with me, if you will. And he raised the dead That's what kind of man Jesus is He healed the sick And he raised the dead That's what kind of man Jesus is Ananias Ananias Tell me what kind of man Jesus is Ananias Ananias Tell me what kind of man Jesus is. Play it, Johnny boy. Wake me up, son. <laughs> And the 
blind to see That's what kind of man Jesus is Made the lame to walk And the blind to see That's what kind of man Jesus is Ananias Ananias Tell me what kind of man Jesus is Ananias Ananias Tell me what kind of man Jesus is in a grave he got up the third day that's what kind of man Jesus is he is sitting on high he's coming again that's what kind of man Jesus is Ananias Ananias tell me what kind of man Jesus is Ananias Ananias Tell me what kind of man Jesus is. Play it again, son. Hallelujah. This is about him today. I said, this is about Jesus. He got up the third day. Praise God. Hallelujah. One more time. They put him in a grave. He got up the third day. That's what kind of man Jesus is. He ascended on high. He's coming again. That's what kind of man Jesus is. Ananias. Ananias. Tell me what kind of man Jesus is. Ananias. Ananias. Tell me what kind of man Jesus is. I hate to have to stop right there, but I guess I better. <laughs> Praise God. I tell you, it gets good when it gets about Him, right? Thank the Lord, and He's what it's all about. Every day, not just today, but every day. He's the resurrection and the life every day. He said to Martha, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection right now. And so I'm glad the Lord can raise us up right now and lift our burdens take care of all of our problems and our cares and he's worthy to be praised this morning amen and he certainly got up the third day and he's certainly coming again all of the prophecies that were prophesied concerning him came to pass amen and everything that jesus said came to pass and he's coming again he said he would and i believe that and that's our assurance this morning and he said, I'm going to go prepare a place for you, and then I'm going to come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Praise God. We believe this morning. I mean, say, I believe. And that's the point. That's the whole thing about it. Uh, I mean, uh, Betty May used to sing that song, I Wasn't There, when, the, when he died on Calvary, but I believe he died for me. Amen. And we know that we were not there when he got up the third day. We weren't there when he appeared to Mary and to uh, the disciples. And we were not there when he appeared to some 500 people. But we believe that he did. We believe that he arose. And Paul said if he still, uh, if he didn't uh, get raised, if he wasn't raised up, then we're still in our sins. And I'm glad I'm not in my sins this morning. I'm glad my sins are gone. Amen. That's sermon number one, okay? <laughs> Praise God. That may be the best one this, uh, this morning. I don't know. But anyway, I want to read uh, this morning. I've just uh, chosen to do this. Uh, so often we uh, read the, uh, the stories from the gospel. But I just want to read this from the book of Acts chapter 2 this morning, uh, beginning with verse number 22 and uh, reading down through verse 27. Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God, among you by miracles and wonders and signs, 
which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one uh, to see uh, corruption. Uh, thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. May we pray. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for this great day of Resurrection Sunday. Lord, that we have the privilege, Lord, to uh, just come together and to worship and to celebrate uh, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. And we are so thankful in our hearts, so blessed uh, in our uh, our minds and our hearts this morning already. Thank you for your good presence, Lord, that we can feel in our hearts and lives. Thank you for the Holy Ghost that lives and abides within us, Lord. It makes you known uh, to us in a greater way. Lord, I pray for this uh, congregation this morning, Lord, that you'll touch every mind, every heart. May the hand of God uh, be upon each and every one of us, knowing, Lord, that uh, we can't do anything, but we can come and find help at your hand this morning. Lord, I pray for everyone in this audience this morning that has a need in their lives, Lord, to be met before they leave this place. Uh, they'll not go away from here uh, as they came, Lord, but they'll go away changed uh, uh, in, into your likeness and uh, receive that that they need for their hearts and lives today. And we'll give you the praise for it, honor and glory for that you do for us. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. The Jews are responsible for the crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ. They tried to blame it on the Romans, but they were responsible. God already knew about it, according to this verse that we read in verse 23. He said Ye, uh, that uh, him doing, having delivered uh, by the determinate counsel, the next phrase says, and the knowledge of God. God already knew. He already had everything planned. He knew what he would do before the foundation of the world. Uh, that he would send his only begotten son into this world uh, to bleed and to die for lost humanity. And we who were uh, lost and we who were in sin, uh, uh, then uh, the Lord already had a plan uh, even before the foundation of the world uh, because he was that lamb uh, who was slain from the foundation of the world. God already uh, had this uh, in his plan. He already knew that they would crucify the Son of God. He already knew this, but they are accountable uh, for what they did. Uh, they, are, they are held uh, in account, accountable uh, for uh, the crucifixion uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and so the Lord already knew all of that, but here today uh, we are celebrating the resurrection uh, of our Lord and Savior uh, Jesus Christ. And we call it a uh, Resurrection Sunday. Uh, know that uh, in, in, in the secular world, it's still uh, uh, referred to as Easter. Uh, but Easter uh, is in the Bible. Somebody said one time, Easter is not in the Bible. It is in the Bible, uh, but it refers to the Passover uh, because they said that uh, they would not uh, crucify Peter until after Pa after Easter, which that word means Passover, after the Passover, uh, then uh, Peter would be held uh, over uh, during that period of time. And so we know that uh, the resurrection this morning and Easter, if you will, uh, is not about uh, 
eggs. Uh, it's not about rabbits. It's not about uh, uh, things like that, but it's about uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ uh, uh, from the dead. You look back uh, in uh, the book of Genesis and you see a great picture of it uh, when uh, Abraham was going to take his son Isaac on Mount Moriah and offer him as a sacrifice unto the Lord, but uh, the Lord stopped him and uh, there was a ram that was caught in the thicket. That thicket would remind you of that crown of thorns that would be placed uh, upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, but Abraham knew uh, that God was going to provide himself a sacrifice. And all, uh, all of that in Genesis 22 points uh, uh, to what would happen to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so Abraham... Uh, being far, uh, far from able to father a child, if you will, knew that God would be able to raise up uh, this son from the dead if he did take his life. This is the kind of faith that he had, uh, that he believed that. And so we see a picture of the resurrection uh, uh, even, uh, even at that. And we uh, see in the Psalms how that David spoke, uh, spoke of it as we uh, read here, that he would not uh, suffer his a holy one to see uh, corruption. Aren't you glad the grave couldn't hold him? Amen. Death couldn't keep him inside uh, that grave. And I've got news for you. There ain't no grave uh, going to hold my body down. Uh, amen. There's no grave going to hold your body down. One day we're going to hear the trumpet sound and we're going to get up out of the ground and we're going to be caught up uh, uh, in the air to meet the Lord and we will forever ever be uh, with the Lord and what a grand time that is going to be and this is all because of our faith in him. Uh, Paul said it's by grace through faith that you're saved uh, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God. He said with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth uh, a confession is made known unto salvation and so it's uh, whether, uh, whether you believe or or not today. We can sing all of the songs about the resurrection. We can read or quote all of the scriptures about the resurrection but unless you believe uh, uh, then it won't happen for you. But you can say I believe. You can say Lord I believe and know that all things are possible uh, because of you uh, and we have to believe there has to be uh, that uh, revelation uh, uh, to your own heart that the Lord speaks within you that he reveals himself within you just as he did uh, to Peter there when they, uh, Jesus asked them, who do you say the Son of Man is? And they began uh, to say John the Baptist or Elias or Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But he said, whom do you say that I the Son of Man am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ, uh, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood has not made this known unto to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Uh, it takes the Lord uh, uh, to reveal himself to us and we have to answer and reply to that revelation and say, Lord, I believe. Uh, receive him uh, as Lord and Savior. And he lives today. He lives. You ask me how I know he lives. Uh, he lives uh, in my heart. Amen. Amen. And I feel myself inside taking a running fit. I'm not going to take one. I'd pass out before I got halfway around the building probably. <laughs> Amen. But there's something real about this. There's something real uh, in our hearts. And so Peter in this passage that we read uh, 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 is preaching about this. He's, he's, pre he's preaching about uh, what has taken place, how that Jesus uh, was raised uh, uh, from the dead. And how that God already knew all of this was going to be. Paul himself uh, preached about it when he said Christ must needs uh, have suffered uh, and then arise uh, from the dead. He had to first suffer. He had to first go to the cross. Uh, that's when mercy walked in. Uh, is when Jesus went to the cross in your behalf and in my behalf. Uh, he paid a debt he did not owe. 
Amen. I mean, he paid the debt uh, for you, the sin debt for you, the guilt that you were guilty of. He took all of that upon himself, uh, and he's cast all of our sins. Uh, if we have confessed them before him, if we have forsaken them, he don't save you in your sins. Uh, he saves you from them. Uh, he saves you out of them. He brings you out of them. And so when we confess our sins to God, we acknowledge knowledge uh, that we have sinned uh, and that we are sinners uh, but the second part of that uh, is that we have to turn from those sins uh, we have to forsake sin we can't just keep living in sin we've got to forsake that and come out of that and then we know that Jesus then takes those sins uh, and puts them in the sea of his forgetfulness never 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 to be remembered against us anymore you you don't have to worry about uh, facing those sins ever again because he has forgiven them and he has forgotten them. Remember the song? Y'all awful quiet. <laughs> Maybe I'm loud enough for all of us. I don't know. Amen. <laughs> Remember the song that was uh, had years ago, What Sins Are You Talking About? I don't remember them anymore. Amen. We don't need a song for that. We've got the Bible for it. Amen. That the Lord has forgiven us. He has cleansed us. He has saved us uh, from our sins. And in the story, in the Gospels, we see... Uh, the drama of it. We see all the different uh, characters there and how the, the women came uh, first of all, and I'll try to uh, hurry and get you out here in just a little bit, but i like to uh, just go over the story just a little bit if that's okay. But we see the woman bringing uh, the, the spices uh, uh, there that morning. I mean, they didn't expect to find what they, what they uh, found. They didn't expect to experience this. Uh, they were coming to anoint the body uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were going to put these perfumes on his dead body uh, to cover the stench of death. This is why they came. They didn't even expect him to be uh, uh, risen from the dead. They didn't expect that. Uh, uh, somehow, even though uh, several times Jesus tells them, he lets them know in, in uh, no uncertain terms, I'm going to rise the third day. But somehow they didn't get it. The women didn't get it. The disciples didn't get it. None of them didn't get the message. They did not get it. But Jesus surprises us with things, doesn't he? he hallelujah. He surprises us when he shows up uh, in the midst of those hard and difficult Difficult circumstances, uh, those problems that you have that you seem like uh, can never be solved, that there's no answer, that there's no help, that there's no hope. But then Jesus shows up. Then the mercy of God steps in out to the situation uh, and he makes the difference. Uh, and they were surprised uh, uh, when they came and found the stone rolled away. They said, who's going to roll the stone away? I mean, they some say it could have weighed as much as a couple thousand pounds. I don't know how much it weighed. These poor little women wasn't going to get it rolled away. They want to know how in the world is the stone going to be rolled away. And we wonder sometimes maybe we have stones in our lives. We wonder how we're ever going to get this stone, this obstacle uh, moved out of the way. But thank God for the angel of the Lord. Uh, the Bible said the angel of God came down and rolled the stone uh, away and the soldiers uh, uh, were a part of this story uh, sitting there when they came, uh, amen, and when uh, when Jesus uh, uh, came uh, forth from the grave, when he arose, uh, these soldiers uh, uh, fell as dead, one uh, verse says. Uh, the soldiers uh, 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 fell as dead men. The angel uh, said, I know whom you seek. Uh, you seek Jesus uh, of Nazareth, but he is not here, for he has risen as he said. Uh, just like he told you time and time time again, he has risen just as he has already told you. And the greatest 
character of the story is the Savior himself. It is the Lord Jesus Christ himself that he met Mary and she supposing him uh, to be the gardener said where have you laid him uh, and then he speaks her name Mary. Hallelujah. You'll know it's him uh, if he speaks your name. Uh, when he speaks uh, to you, when he whispers sweet peace to you, uh, you'll know that it's him. Uh, and Mary knew him and he said, touch me not for I have not yet ascended unto your God and to my God, uh, but go and tell my disciples uh, and Peter that I have risen from the dead uh, and I will meet them. Uh, uh, amen. I I will meet them uh, at, at, in the city. And so this is that, what Jesus did. Uh, and so the angel is the one that rolled the stones away, uh, the stone away and gave them the message. Uh, the guard fell as dead men uh, there at the tomb uh, of Jesus. And the angel spoke of, uh, to them how that he was risen from the dead. And so Jesus met his disciples. Uh, they fell at his feet, and uh, uh, or she did, and they worshiped him. And he said, go tell my brethren. So we have the certainty here of the resurrection uh, of Jesus Christ. And as I said, if we, if we go through all of the scriptures, if we go through all of the songs and everything that's said, nonetheless, we have to believe. Uh, we have to believe. And the word said, if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, it shall also quicken your mortal body. Jesus is the first fruits of them that slept. He is the one that got up never to die again. I know he raised Lazarus from the dead. He raised others from the dead, but they all died again. But Jesus didn't die again. He died once, never. Watch the word never. He died once, never to die again. Never to die again. And he said, if this same spirit dwells in you that raised Jesus from the dead, it'll also raise you up. It'll quicken your mortal bodies. And we experience uh, uh, the resurrection life this morning because of what Jesus did for us. And I think that the things that we experience, <clears throat> that we would experience if we were there, we still experience it today by our faith, and that is the very presence of Jesus. We experience his presence. They experienced his presence. He came there as they were gathered uh, behind closed doors uh, that Jesus came and stood there uh, in their midst. Some of them had betrayed him. They had denied him. They had forsaken him. But nonetheless, he came to them as he does us. In our lives, in our uh, speech, if you will, in our uh, deeds that we do, the places we go, a lot of times we're betraying him. We're denying him. We're backsliding, if you will, on the Lord. But nonetheless, he still comes to us because he has loved us with an everlasting love. He'll never stop loving you. I don't care how far your children get away from you. You'd go to the ends of the earth to get them back. If, you, uh, if there's any way possible that you could do that. And that's exactly what Jesus did for us. He came to the ends of the earth uh, uh, to bring us back. And every time we fail, he doesn't give up on us. He keeps reaching out for us. Uh, he keeps reaching down for us. Uh, he keeps lifting us up. He keeps showering his love on us and letting us know he loves us. And we cannot continue in sin. Uh, we have to turn back to him. Uh, if we've ever been uh, 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 in touch with God. If we've ever been saved by the grace of God, sin will not be able to hold us out there uh, in this world uh, that is so corrupt because there's a greater power. There's a stronger power. There's a stronger pull. God has a stronger pull. Hallelujah. He's able. 
he's able to bring us unto himself all because of his great love. And so they were certainly uh, not expecting Jesus to show up here uh, in this upper room where they were. But the Bible says they were glad when they saw the Lord. I mean, he had returned to this same group uh, of weak beings, if you will. I mean, they were just fleshly uh, beings uh, because he was, he was not through with them yet. I mean, say he's not through with me yet. He's still working on me. <laughs> Amen. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. And so he was not through with these little weaklings. <laughs> These that were so weak that they could not even watch for him one hour while he went to pray, to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, to find uh, uh, maybe another way if possible. If it's possible, he says to his father, let this cup pass from me, but not as I will, but as you will. This was the prayer of Jesus. He knew when he returned to them that they would be asleep. He said the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. This flesh of ours is weak. Our spirit is willing, and it's the spirit uh, that God's going to touch uh, that's going to drag the flesh uh, right back where it needs to be. He's going to bring you right back where you need to be. And so he appears to these weak disciples because he was not finished with them yet. He was going to tell them to go back to Jerusalem and tarry there till you be endued with power uh, from on high. And he said, you'll receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. And Peter seemed to be such a boisterous one among them and uh, nevertheless the weakest as far as the flesh went. But Jesus says to Peter, Satan has desired to sift you as wheat but I have prayed for you, and when you're converted, then you strengthen the brethren. Amen. I mean, say the Lord's not through with us yet. Amen. And so he appears uh, to them, and I'll tell you, you're not going to get rid of Jesus anyway. He's going to keep coming, knocking on your door. They thought maybe those that were his accusers and his haters, they thought maybe they'd uh, get away, uh, do away with Jesus. They'd nail him to a cross. Uh, they'd put him in a tomb, put this great stone there, and he'd not be able to get away, put soldiers there uh, to guard him, and they thought uh, they had him or they wanted him. Amen. But they didn't uh, think about what he had said. In three days, I'm going to raise it up again. I'm going to get up out of the grave. And so that's what the resurrection is for us this morning. It's about the presence of God. It's about the peace of the Lord because these were the words that he said to those uh, behind those closed doors because they were fearful of the Jews. He said, peace be unto you. He doesn't come to us and scold us and whip us and beat us down and condemn us, but he says, peace be unto you. You remember what Jesus said, in the world you'll have tribulations. In the world you'll have trial, you'll have turmoil, you'll have fears and you'll have doubt and you'll feel helpless and hopeless and all of these things. Uh, but he comes in the midst of all of that and says, peace be unto you. And so this is what the resurrection gives to us this morning. It gives us a manifestation of his presence. And it gives us a demonstration of his peace in our own lives. But it gives us his power as well. His power does through us uh, uh, all that he did while he was here in the days of his flesh. Jesus has chosen uh, a people to carry on his work. He said, the works I do shall you do, and greater than these shall you do because I go unto my Father. And so he has sent us forth uh, uh, to do a work for him just as he did those uh, disciples when he breathed upon them and said, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Uh, 
as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And so the Lord sends us forth uh, in the power of his resurrection to proclaim uh, his healing power, his miracle working power, his saving power, that Jesus will save anyone that will turn from their sins and turn and turn to him. And, and he wants us to, uh, to, uh, to demonstrate that power that we have, the power of the gospel. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. And I'm glad for the, his power this morning that we can feel and experience in our lives. Uh, we can experience the resurrection uh, today because, as we said, he, he stated, I am the resurrection. He's the resurrection right now. He's your help right now. He is our hope. He is the anchor of our soul. He's everything uh, that we have need of this morning. And I love him because he first loved me. Amen. Can we bow our heads for a word of prayer this morning? Thank you, Lord. For this day, Lord, this time of celebrating the resurrection, Lord, we thank you for these that have chosen to be here uh, in this service this morning. I pray it's meant something uh, to every heart and every soul. I pray, Lord, that you'll just let our attention be focused on you. Help us, Lord, to look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Whatever needs may be among us today, those that uh, may be unsaved, I don't know anyone's heart, don't know anyone's uh, position and where they are with you, how they stand with you but Lord each one knows uh, I pray that you'll they'll allow the Spirit of God to search their hearts Lord that you'll do that needs to be done in each of us this morning we'll be careful to praise you to love you and to thank you for that you do for us in Jesus name amen and amen we give you an opportunity to pray this morning if you'd like to do so I'd like to sing a course or two of because he lives I don't know what key that's in elf maybe Sounds good. Because he lives. Everybody can sing that, I think. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because. today. I surely have been blessed. I praise the Lord for his goodness. We'll ask John to step out here. We 